In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can read GenBank files using Python. Now, a GenBank file is a type of bioinformatics data and it stores information that include DNA and or protein sequences. In addition, it also stores the annotations of the sequences. Note that GenBank files contain more information than faster formats. So for this tutorial, we are going to use the BioPython package to read the GenBank file as an example of how you can read these GenBank files using Python. So before we do that, we have to get a sample data set that we we'll use. So we we'll visit the NCBI database to download the genome that we we'll use. So we go to NCBI, and this is the page, download page of the organism we are going to use. So this is the bacterial species and we are going to use its complete genome as an example for this tutorial. So to download the GenBank file, you need to first go to this section, send to, click on it, make sure complete record is checked, then choose destination and click on file. Then when you come to the format, select GenBank 4, this is what we are going to use. After that, you click on create file and you download it. So you'll be asked to download, and then when you do that, you select the location that you want to download to. So I'll select my location. So it's sequence.gb. Then I'm going to save it on my desktop. Please know that I'm going to leave a link in the description box to the page where you can download this genome for a story. So don't worry about the source. So the download is complete, so you can check. It's on my desktop here. There's a sequence name, and that's what I'm going to use. So after you have your download complete and your data is ready, the first thing you have to do is to import your library, which is BioPython. So if you don't know how to install Python packages, I will leave a link in the description box that shows you how to install Python libraries using pip. So we start. Import, we see from bio, import zip io. So that becomes our first command. The next is to set a, path, a file path. Where is the file located? Python has to know. So we set a file path. File path. Yeah, so the file pass will show you where the file is and then a the file name. So this is where my file is located and this is the file name. Please know that your file parts will likely to be different from mine. So put the right one there. So after we've set the part, it's now time to read the GenBank file. And we assign it to a variable as well. So we say genbank object equals to seek io dot read file path and then the format. So now that we have the object read, it's now time to explore. But before that, let me say that we are using dot read because genbank files usually contain one record. And so we use this one. To do that if it's multiple records we use past but that will be for another video okay so we have the genbank file read so it's not time to explore there are a lot of things we can explore and extract but so depending on your goal then you select the ones that you want so we can query for what the record id so let's say record id is equals to genbank object.id and we can print it as well. So it's a record ID. It gives us, we can also query for the record name. So we say record dot name, record name is equals to genbank object dot name. So print record name. It gives us the name. Now, because it's a whole genome, we can also query the sequence of that genome as well. 
and we can see record tick is equal to gen bank objects dot tick and we can even find the length of the we can find the length of the sequence so we see sequence length is equal to length record tick and we can print we can print length so let's say print sequence length so this is the length so it's 5.6 um, mb that's the length of the sequence that's the whole genome now aside this we can also look at description so let's just say we we'll do straightforward so let's say print so it's a description is equals to genbank object dot description and we can print it so say description we print it so description tells us it's a mycobacterium or strands ag199 complete genome we can also look at another information which is the annotation so we see annotations is equal to gen bank object dot annotations now we print it so annotation tells you information about the genome the general information which will include uh, the molecule type topology and then other information but this what is returned is a dictionary object so if you want to get a more structured result from the annotations then you need to write additional codes but that is beyond um, this tutorial so i will skip that one okay so now we are getting to the interesting part now gembank file contains what to call features or let me put it this way the sequences in the genbank files are categorized into features so features will have types so in the bacterial genome features you could have cds genes and others but you can actually query and see the types of features present in this genome so we can do it using these steps so first of all look at the features you see features equals to genbank object dot features Okay, so we first assign all the features to this variable called features. Okay, so after doing that, we now have all the features. So what do we do next? It's not the features, the all the information about the features we want, but we just want the feature type. So then what we can do is to issue another command, which is list comprehension. So we say feature types equals to and we have this feature dot type for feature in features please take note of this this is how the command is going to be like okay so that's for the feature type now after we've issued a feature type this gives you all the feature types that so we just want the count so we just want just the list of the feature types, just the name. So what we do is to say feature type is equals to set feature types. And then finally, we can bring it back to what list, which is feature types equals to list feature types. Okay, so now that we have this, we can print the feature types. So we can say print feature types and we have the feature types here so this shows you all the information and which category or group they belong to so you can see that we have what let's look at those notable among them we have cds we have gen we have mobile element we have crna we have rna okay so these informations are useful and so if you want let's say a feature which belongs to a particular type here all that you need to do is query 
um, that particular type and then extract the needed information. Okay, now you can also count the features. So let's just say we want to count how many CDS we have, how many gen, mobile elements, tRNA, rRNA. If we want to count them, we will use a for loop in the code as well to try and iterate through each of them, extract the associated features, and then we now count them. So we can do it this way. So we can say, because we already have the feature types here, let's just say we want to subset um, those that we want to count. So let's just create a list. Let's just say feature type again is equals to, and then we just create a list that has only the ones that we want. So let's just create this list here. If you don't know how to create a list, please watch my video on creating list, and I'll leave that in the description box below as well. Okay, so we just want some of the few features we are interested in and we can count them. Okay, so let's see these ones. Okay, so this is the list we have about the feature types we are interested in counting. Okay, so first of all, let's confirm that our list has been created, then we can count. Of course, so these ones. So now that we have the features of interest, we can now count each of them We're using the follow. So what we do is that we iterate through each of these and then we extract its features. And then what do we do? We count them. There are several ways of doing that because you are beginners, I'll use the normal way, which might be, which might not be efficient, but good for learning Python. So we say for feature in feature, types then we come all features is equals to this okay we are using a list comprehension i for i in features don't forget we had these features here we first started all the features here okay so and that's what we are going to use so we say i for i in features if I dot type is equals to the feature we are creating here. Okay, it's equals to feature. Then we now come, we say number of features is equals to len or features. Then we can now print the number of features. So let's do it this way. Let's say print number of features. And then we bring this colon here, and then we say we bring another comma here, and then we say number of features. We just want to make it organized. So what do we do? We now issue the commands. Okay, so notice that it has counted all the features here for us, number of features. But we can also make this code more informative. At the moment, we say number of features, but we don't know which of these features we are counting. So let's just make this code more organized. So let's just modify it here. So here, instead of printing number of features, which we know we are doing, we can just say, let's just say this way. We will make it strange formatting. So let's just say we do this, print, Okay, so we say percentage s colon percentage d. Then we come percentage here and then we say feature and then what number of features. Okay, so there's a strange formatting indicating that we are going to input some values here. And of course, strange formatting allows you to also input integers so that's what we have here as well so if you have this all that we need to do is now print so we print okay so notice how it has displayed all of them for us nicely okay so this is how uh, we can read gen bank files using python in a, a nice way in an efficient way because some of these data sets are large 
and doing a manual search or manual counting is practically um, impossible. Okay, so this is how I bring my tutorial to an end on how to explore uh, features in a GenBank file using um, Python. So in the upcoming tutorials, we'll be looking at how you can subset particular features or particular gens and extract their sequences into an output file for further analysis. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next session. Goodbye.